we're dealing with because it was um, increased the value. Okay. Amar Rabbi we didn't finish the story. We interject the story with another opinion and then we get back to the story. Amar Rabbi Yaisi, lo yamar zeb Yisrael The guy didn't even say he would pay an Yisrael. He said he would pay an egg. An egg is even less than an Yisrael. So, shehek tishnev v'kesa v'shav v'kesa. Rabbi Yaisi explained that that shav value is the same like money. What's the difference? Money or actual or bartering? It's the same thing. So, so Rabbi Yaisi says you can even give an egg. Amalei gaticha. Whatever the case is, they said you got it. Whether it's an iser or it's an egg. Nim to mafsi iser v'sadei lefanav. The Gemara concludes with the opinion of the first opinion that he lost an iser, and now he has the field as well, which is uh, wasn't much benefit. If someone consecrates a field, the Gemara is explaining, we're going through line by line of the Mishnah. If someone consecrates a field at a time when there's no Yoivel, they say to him, the Gemara asks, What do you mean, they, they say to him? It sounds like it's a suggestion. You redeem it first. We have another Brisa that says, they force him to, to redeem it first because the, 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 the temple wants to get the extra fifth, so they force him to redeem it. The Gemara explains, my Aymrim, Nami, Kaifin. What does Aymrim mean? It means that they force him. They suggest, they strongly suggest. Right, well, this guy, he's home from Shul early. So his, his wife uh, says, why are you home so early? So he said, oh, they hinted to me I should leave the show. So how did they hint at you? He says, well, they picked me up and put me outside. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. They they uh, they suggested, but they forced him to redeem it. Iba Yisema, if you want, you can say me kara aimrim. Really, what it means, aimrim means that originally they they tell him to to redeem it. Eat sayas sayas. If he listens to them, good. He lie, but if he doesn't listen, kaifin. Then they force him. So yes, it's true that aimrim, but and then they have to force him. Shabaylam neisim kaimish because the owner gives a fifth, and that's why they want the owner to redeem it. My year shabaylam neisim kaimish. What's do I turn on the light? Yeah. I think they got knocked by mistake. What's the reason? Why, why do my area? Area means to like. Why do I have to grab onto that reason? Why specifically? Because the owners give a fifth. I have another reason why the owner should redeem it. It's his field. It's more significant to him. He knows how it works. He would want to get this back. So he's going to add money, tafi, tafi, it means more. It means he's going to increase the price and redeem it because it was his field. Void mitzvah school And also another reason. The Pasuk says that the mitzvah is for the owner to redeem it. That's based on the, on the Gemara in Bechayras Rashi Ben. The Gemara says, Chadavayit kama. Yes, it's true. That those are also reasons. We're adding another reason here. Besides for those reasons. Because it's beloved to him, his field, so he's going to increase the price and he's going to uh, add more money and redeem it. And then also, it's a mitzvah is for him to redeem his own field that he consecrated. And there's another reason that the owner increases by a fifth. So that's we have all those reasons together. There's a story of a person that consecrated his field. The Gemara suggests then maybe the Machlaikis, Rabbi Yaisi, and the Tanakama is regarding the following. Rabbi Yaisi, Savar Shavah Kesef Kikesef, Rabbi Yaisi holds that the value of, of money, of silver, or the value of money is like money. The Rabbanan Savi Shavah Kesef Enik Kesef. And the Rabbanan say that the value of money is not money. The Rabbanan say that you actually have to give money. It's difficult how to translate the word kesef. Kesef means silver, it means money. It has significance even today, like because of the, what was it called, the silver, um, those old dollar bills, there was a silver exchange, what was it called? You know those, those bills? No, they had, originally the dollar bills were... The, it was silver certificates. Silver certificates. Shakaya. So, kesef. Could could mean could mean silver, 
And, and what we're saying here is that you can use an egg as well. Rabbi Yaisi holds you can use an egg as well because it costs a certain amount of silver. So, and so the Machlaikas Rabbi Yaisi and the Rabbanon is, is, is the, the value of silver, is that also like silver? Or, or money? The Gemara says, no, you can't say that. Well, Kaimel and the Shavu Kesef Kesef. Everyone holds that the value is the same like money. If that is the, the definite value, then it's the same like money. What's the difference? Gemara explains the Kuli Alma Shavu Kesef Kesef. Correct. No one argues with Rabbi Yaisi about that. That value is also like is also like money. There's an interesting machlekes here. Rabbi Yaisi says that you can redeem with an egg that the egg is worth a pruta, but the fifth of an egg because the owner needs to increase a fifth. The fifth of the egg is so insignificant that the fifth isn't even worth a pruta. Rabbi Yaisi says that's fine. And the, the Rabbanon say, the Tanakama holds, that you have to redeem with something that its fifth is at least significant. An Isser, the fifth of an Isser, uh, an Isser is actually six pruta, or eight, depending on uh, the time period. So, Tanakama Savar, Isser, the Ikka B'chaim Shav Pruta. An Isser has in its fifth the Shav Pruta. Parkina, that you can use. Rabbi Yaisi, Kibbeit Tanami Parkina. And Rabbi Yaisi holds that you can even use an egg, which doesn't have a... a, a, a a pruta, the smallest coin in its fifth. Ramalei, they say to him, "Migaticha, you got it." Nim to That means that he loses an iser and he has the field. Gemara says, "Stomach karabanan." The Mishnah concludes not like Rabbi Yaisi. The Mishnah concludes like the Rabbanon. So we have a stam Mishnah at the end that we're going like the Rabbanon, which means what does that mean? According to the way we're explaining, that it needs to be a Shava Pruta in its fifth. So look at the next Mishnah. This is an interesting Mishnah. Mishnah says, Amar Echad, if a person says, Harehi Shali Be'eser, I'll take the field back, or I'll take the field, I'll buy it for 10 coins. Be'eser Slaim, sorry, 10 Slaim. Be'echad Amar Be'eserim. One says, Oh, uh, to me it's worth 20. I'll, I'll redeem it from the temple with 20 coins. And one says, 30. It sounds like a bid in the, in, for, in the show, for an auction. One says, out to 40. One says, 50. Okay, who's going to get it? The one that says 50. But what happens? The guy that says 50 says he retracts. He says, nah, I'm not taking it. Okay. So, Mamashkinen Menachasav Eser. Just drop the word out. We have to take a collateral from him, 10 coins, till he pays it up. Because even though the guy that says 40 is going to give the 40, but now the, be- the, the hectish is losing out 10 coins because he pledged 50 and he's not giving it. So, who pays the 10? This fellow. The, the rule is Amirase. Who, who retracted? Who retracted. Amirase le Gavaya. The Gemara tells us that if someone says something regarding anything that's sanctified, it's as if he had given it to a regular... In, a, in other words, you, you need an actual exchange amongst people for something to take place. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to... I'll buy that Gemara off you for 40. And then you say, okay, here it is. And I say, no, no, I didn't mean it. And I, I can just walk away. I, don't, I didn't make any Kenyan there. I can just walk away. And I says, well, you're letting me down. It's okay, I let you down. I'm sorry. But when it comes to hectish, and I say something, it's not just like, I, if I walk away, it's not just like I let you down. It's as if there was a real exchange that took place. So therefore, the guy that says 50 really has to pay the 50. Now, they're getting the 40 from someone else. He doesn't have to pay the 40s, but that extra 10, he, he has to give. Let's say the one that says 40 retracts. They take from him 10. The one that said 30 retracts, Mashkim Rechas of Eser. Chazer Beishel Eserim, the one that said 20 retracts, Mashkim Rechas of Eser. They take 10 from him. So what the Mishnah sounds like it's saying is that they're getting 10, 10 from each person that increased by 10. Chazer Beishel Eserim, we'll see. It's not necessarily what the Mishnah means, but we'll see. Let's say the guy that said 10 retracts. Meichan Eser B'Shavah, they sell it for its value. Benefram Yishel Eser, Esam and they, let's say it only sold for seven. 
The guy that said 10 has to pay the extra 3. Right? Let's say the owners say that they'll pay 20. And everyone else says they'll pay 20. The owners come first. Why? Because they're going to add a fifth. And a fifth to 20 is 25. Not really, but that's the way it works in your home. Because you divide it by four, and then you put the, another fourth on, and then that's considered a fifth. Right? I'm sorry? On the total. On the total, it's a fifth. Uh, let's say one says, Let's say one says, I'll buy it for 21. How much did the owner say? The owner said 20. This fellow says, I'll buy it for 21. Who's more? 21 is more in the principal. But together with the fifth, the owner's more. The owner's giving 25. It says, The owner has to pay 26. Why? Because he really owed 20. Five, the owner. But because this fellow increased it, so we make the owner give the extra one that he increased. He doesn't have to pay a fifth on the increase, but he still has to pay that extra one. So this other fellow is really um, causing the owner to lose out. I don't know how that's going to work. Let's say the fellow says, Besim Vishtayim, 22. Well, it's the same story. The owners have to give 27. In other words, you add the two on the top. Besim Vishalish, they say 23. They add the three on the top, 28. The owners need to pay 29, which is 25 plus 4. Let's say 25. The owners have to pay 30. The Gemara is going to discuss why it's really. It would have come out the same thing. Okay. Um, they don't add a fifth on top of what the person increased. They only add a fifth to their price. Let's say this person says, I'm going to buy it for 26. So that's more even than the fifth. If the owner wants to give, 31 in a dinar, then the owner comes first. And if not, they can say, okay, you got it, the other fellow gets it. The Gemara is going to need to explain what, like, what's going on over there. Amar of Chizda. We jump a generation or two here, and we, and Rav Chizda qualifies what the Mishnah means. Laishanu, Ella, this Mishnah was only taught. Laishanu Ella is the way an Amoira would say, Amurim. The Mishnah uses a phrase when it wants to say, when it wants to qualify what it's referring to. It says, Amurim. When were these words said? That's how the Mishnah would say it. When an Amoira comes along and explains the Mishnah, he uses the term, Laishanuela. This was only taught only in such a case. But it's, it's, it's exactly the same thing. This was only taught, If the one that said 40 is still there. We're talking, going back to the case where the one that said 50 retracts. The one that said 40 is still there. Aval ein ben arba, aval ein ben arba, but let's say the 40 also retracts. So now I have the 50 that retracted, I have the 40 that retracted, and I'm left with the 30 that's going to purchase the field. Then I have to divide it between them. How would you divide this? Well, the one that said 50 definitely owes 10 to Hektish. But now the 40 retracted. The one that owes 40, he wasn't the only one that said 40. The one that said 50 also said 40. Because he said 50. So what you do is you take the 40, the 10 that the 40 owes, and you divide it in half. It means the one that said 50 pays 15. He has a In other words, the 41 has a partner in that. The 51 pays 15, the 41 pays 5. The Mishnah didn't say that. The Mishnah said each one gives 10. 
Tanan, the Mishnah taught, Chazer Baishel Abba Mashkin and Eser, Amai, Lethin Bar Chamishin Bahadei. Why doesn't the 51 pay together with him? It's a Kasha. Kasha and Rav Chizda. The Gemara answers the Leka Ben Chamishin. It's a different case. You thought, when you read the Mishnah, that that was all one case. Someone said 20, someone said 30, someone said 40, someone said 50. The 51 retracted. The 41 retract. It's a different case. When it says the 41 retracted, that's a different case. There was no 50 person there. That wasn't a case where anyone ever said 50. What about the 30? Am I, why does the 31 pay 10? Why doesn't the 41 pay 5 of those, of those coins? I'm talking about it's a different case. There was no 40. There's no person that offered 40 in that case. We're going to go down until 10, and then we're going to have a question, and we're going to see that we were not able to answer this so easy. So far, we're getting away with saying that they're in the independent cases, each case here. The one that said 20 retracts. So you take 10 from him, and the 10 person buys it. Am I leading the bench later by day? Why do you take 10 from him? Let the one that said 30 give five of those. 10, because he's a partner in it. The Lekha Ben Shleshim. There's no one over there in that case that said 30. It's a separate case. It was only the highest one over here was 20. Yihachi, Ima Seifa. Okay, so far you've explained almost all, you've explained almost everything. But, Chazar Ba Yishal Eser, if you look at the last case, it says, if the one that said 10 retracts, you sell it for its value. And the one that said 10 pays the difference between its value and the 10. Why doesn't the one that said 20 pay part of that? Because the 20 also included that. If you're going to answer the same story, that there is no 20 there, then you should have used the pronoun. If there's only one person there, it's only the person that said 10, then why do you have to repeat that it's the one that said 10? Just say we have him pay for it. There's only one person there. You can use a pronoun if there's only one person there. So everything was being answered until we get to the end. When we get to the end, then we're stuck. Like this guy was going for his uh, smicha test. So they asked him, what's it, Igeris? Remember, it was a type of nick in the knife. And Chulin remembered there was a, a nick. That, so they said, uh, oh, it's a girl that's 12 and a half years old. So that's a boy Geris. So the rabbi says, so what's a boy Geris? So he says, he goes on to something else. He says, so, so the rabbi asked him, so what's that? So he goes on to something else. And each one, he goes, he keeps going. The rabbi's playing with him. He says, so what's the, what it really is? Finally, at the end, he says, okay, I don't know. He just says, okay, I can't give you the smicha. So he says, why? I just didn't know one thing. <laughs> <laughs> so here, we, we worked it all the way to the end. We only have the problem at the end, but that problem at the end tells me that the whole thing doesn't work. Okay. So, Ella Amar Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda has to respond to this last question. Like Kasha. Kam basachas, kam Depends what's, how this is taking place. If all of them come together and they say we're not paying it, so they all said they would, and they all say now they won't. So then, right? They all said they would, and now they all say they they won't. So then, they have to join together to replace this. And the way they rejoin together is the 50. When the 50 retracts, he's retracting together with the 40 and all of them. He has to participate in all of those. In all, he becomes a partner in all of them. I don't know what it's going to be in the end. You've got to work that out. It's a half of each one. Because he pays 15 already at the 40. Now at the 31, there's going to be divided into three. It's going to be, an, you add an extra 3.3 over there. right? And then in the 21, you're going to add a 2. Two point five, right? You're gonna, uh, it's gonna fill in. <coughs> okay. 
However, if it's B'zeach Hazeh, then when 51 retract, the 41 was still in place. He said, look, I left you in good hand. <coughs> now the 41 retracts, he's got to pay the whole thing. The, all 10, right? That would be the difference. Tani Nami Hachi. There's also a brisa that says this. If they all retract together, then they have to divide up the costs. What are you talking about? They have to divide it up. Each one pays 10, it says in our Mishnah. It must be Rav is correct, that it depends when they show up. If they show up together, if they show up independently, each one claiming, okay, I, I'm, I changed my mind. Some asked it as a contradiction. It's the same story, it's just you can pose these two brises as a contradiction. Kanan, one of Mishnah says, that if the one that says 10 retracts, then they sell it for its value, and the one that says 10 has to pay the difference. Why does he pay the difference? He doesn't pay the full difference. We have another b'risa that says that they have to divide it up between, it, between them. Rav Chiz responds to the contradiction. Depends when they show up. If they come, if the owner, if the, not the owners, if the people that are the, the bidders show up at different times, that they're retracting at different times, then each one pays his own amount that he's retracting. And if they show up together in their retraction, then they have to divide it. Let's say the owner says 20 and everyone else says 20. The owners get it. That means that the fifth increases the price and the fifth because the hectish is getting more, that extra fifth, that's significant enough that the owner should win the bid. Raminu, there's a contradiction. We have another b'risa regarding Meiser Shani. Maybe it's a Mishnah. The Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Bala Bala The way it works with Meiser Shani is you have produce that you need to eat in Jerusalem. The problem is, to schlep all the produce to Jerusalem is a big job. So what you can do is, you can exchange the produce for money, you leave the produce with your family, you take the money as when you go to the temple, and in, in, the, in Jerusalem, you purchase food items with that money. How much is, do you, do you, do you uh, exchange it for? So let's say the owner says, I'll exchange it for a sela. And another person says, I'll exchange it for a sela and an iser. Shall sell of the iser kaidem. The owner that said a sela. He has to give a seller plus a dinar. A seller is four dinar. He has to add a fifth. The other person only has to add a seller and an iser. It's a much smaller coin. He doesn't have to pay the fifth. What does that mean? That I only look at the principal. The one that says that, that had the higher principal. He wins, and the fifth doesn't matter to us. Because he's a, the other fellow is adding to the principal. So why, when it comes to redeeming from Hector, do we say, I look at the fifth? When it comes to redeeming from Isa Shani, I say, I look at the principal. Who gets the money? Hector gets the money. When Hector gets the money, I look at what's the actual increase to Hector, which is the fifth. But when it comes to Maiser Shani, who's using the money? The one, the owner. Doesn't go to anyone else. He gets to spend it. It's his spending money when he goes on vacation to, uh, to Jerusalem. It's not vacation. It's, he's going to the temple. He's going to Jerusalem. So Karna, Tifrik Shapir. It's the, the principle that we look at, not at the extra money. So the extra money doesn't, doesn't uh, interest us because we would probably be spending that, whatever. We're looking at the real, what's the real um, redemption here? The real redemption is only the principal money because you can already use the food even before you add the fifth. So the real redemption takes place from the principal. This person is adding to the principal, he gets it. That's the actual redemption. The fifth is just an increase that he's supposed to add at some point. You said that he, exchange, he, 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 he takes money and he leaves the produce with his family. So there's no sale. 
It's just saying instead right. of taking produce, I'm taking cash. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be a sale if someone else says, I'm going to redeem it for more. And I'll take that money. Someone else can redeem it also. Someone else can show up. He takes the money from his own pocket. He could take money from his own pocket and say, this money is now my Sashani money. I can't spend this money outside of Jerusalem. I can only spend this money in Jerusalem. Or someone else can show up and say, that produce over there that you're supposed to be taking, I'll redeem it for, for more. Okay, Omar Echad Shali, if someone increases the price. So, what's the pass over here? If someone says, I'll increase to 25. So the owners need to pay 30. Why? Because the owners really need to pay 25. Because that's what they pledged, plus a fifth. And then you have to add the other fellows on. So what is it? Be'asr mechamesh. If he says 25, noisim shleishim. The Gemara says, v'leim rubay l'masa gavra becharipin. You know what the word charipin is? Charikoi. Charikoi means in our stead, in our place. Charikoi means a gap. In, in, uh, it's used in... Um, when you appoint a shliach or something, I can give it to someone else, becharikai, in my place. So, yeah, we're using that word over here. So, someone else is paying exactly what we would pay. Why do we have to increase that? Damar Bailam Dinar. We're talking about that they actually added an extra dinar to it. They said 20 and a dinar. So, there's dinar is already there. The Gemara says, for listening dinar. So, why doesn't it say that? Because they actually owe 20 in a, in a dinar plus a fifth. Where it says lay duck. We weren't getting into small change. But then in the end it says it. He has to give 30, 1, plus a dinar if they wanted to. No, in the last case it says if he's going to give 26, they can give 31 in a dinar. That says Bailam Kaidman. Over there, we do say the dinar. He didn't actually add a dinar. He added a pruta. And the pruta, that we're not discussing. That's like pennies. But nevertheless, it's still more. It, it seems that all these amounts must be trifling amounts that are just symbolic. Right. Because otherwise, how can you say we force somebody to redeem it? What if he doesn't have the money? What if he can't? Right. It must be we're talking about very, very small amounts. Uh-huh. I would think. Could be. Is it? I don't know. Same as the, the Mishnah says that you don't add a fifth onto the, what the other person increased. You have to pay what he increased, but the owners need to pay that, but they don't add a fifth onto that. Am Rav Chizda Leishan, Rav Chizda does this again. He qualifies it. Leishan Uel, this was only taught, Shalai Nisim Hektish Begimel. That's only if it wasn't evaluated. See, if this gets evaluated, then it has a real price. We're talking about we are, the owner is giving a price, what he's going to pay. Some other guy comes along and gives a price. But if it was actually brought to the market and evaluated by people that can, that can uh, appraise it, now normally it's appraised by 10 people when it comes to hektish. But if three people appraised it, we're saying, Avonisam hektish begimel, then Maisif, and then you actually have to pay that price plus a fifth to that price, because that's the real price. Tani Namiyach was also taught someone to price. Bishama, Yaimrim, Maisif. Bishama say, that you have to add, add a fifth onto the appraised price. Maisil says you don't have to add a fifth to the appraised price. One second. Maisil says you don't have to add a fifth to the appraised price. That goes contrary to what we said. What's it talking about? Eli Nisim, if it wasn't appraised, my time with the Beishamai. Why does Beishamai say that you have to add a fifth onto, onto the additional, what the other person, if it wasn't appraised, why should you add a fifth? El Nisim, it must be that it was appraised. And Lema Rav Chizda, Damik Beishamai. If it's appraised, then Rav Chizda is saying Beishamai's opinion that you have to add a fifth onto the appraised price. So like we got him here. La Elam Nisim. Really, it wasn't appraised. Beishamai Machmir. Beishamai is just strict. Beishamai says that if someone else is going to add extra to the pr- price, then 
the owner needs to pay whatever anyone else would have paid, plus a fifth on top of them. You can answer differently as well. Really, it was appraised. And Be'epach Be'shamayam remain Maisev. Be'shamay say the opposite. We have to switch the opinions around. Be'shamay say that you don't have to add. And Be'shilal says that you, that you do have to add because it was appraised. It was, now, one second. What we just gained here is, what we gained is that Rav Chizda goes like Be'shilal. Fine. The Gemara says, V'lesnei agabi kule Be'shamay b'chum Be'shil, but Be'shil is machmer. This should have been listed in Masech the Idias. Where over there it says all the statements of Bishamai that are more lenient than Basil. And it, that's not listed in there. So one, once you like you corrupt this Mishnah to, to do that, now we have to go back to Idias and see is it listed over there? It's not listed there. So go back and fix the Mishnah here. You can't do that. We have to go back to our first answer. Really, it's not a praise. Bishamai Machmirim. Bishamai is extra strict. We say that the owner needs to add a fifth on top of what the other person pledged. Bid. There's something missing in this the following Gemara. It's like not 100% clear for me. If the owner said, I'll give 20, if the, if the other fellow says, I'll give 26. So we come to the owner. We say, look, if you'll give 31, in a dinar it could be yours, or if not, you don't need it. Ratsu in, lay ratsu lay. Because if you want, good. If not, not. Amai, also gavar b'charikan. Why did? Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Amri. It's not. There's no Amai here. Why can they say no? That we don't want to redeem it. 